Hey guys, so today I thought I'd do a quick video about um, budgeting for baby and this is going to be a list of your absolute essentials that you will need for your baby when you bring them home. Um, this list, I've seen a lot of lists on YouTube and on the internet that have a lot of really superfluous stuff on them. And I have a baby right beside me, so if he starts making noises and you hear noises, it's because there's babies. Um, anyway, so I've, I've seen a lot of really superfluous stuff on it, and you don't need a lot of stuff when you bring home a baby, like need, need them. So if you are on a really tight budget and you're not sure what you need to get, this is a list of what you need to have on hand. Hi. So the first thing we're going to talk about is feeding. If you are feeding your baby formula, you are going to need bottles and formula before you bring your baby home. It's up to you what kind of bottles and what kind of formula. Um, a lot of people swear by the Advent ones or the Dr. Browns. Um, I don't know. I've never used a bottle. So you'd probably want to check um, on another video. Someone might have a recommendation for you. Um, <laughs> you mash that cookie into your mouth, huh? Is it that good? The um, second thing that you're going to need is something to put on your baby's bum. So um, I recommend having a pack of newborn diapers and then a pack of size 1 diapers if you are disposable diapering. Um, this is because newborn fits I think from 6 pounds to 10 pounds. That's a pretty big range and most babies are going to fit those diapers. Um, and you do need to see the size of your baby before you can like make sure that they fit. So um, just get like one of the little packs. Even if your baby is 9 pounds and you have this pack of newborns, no worries because newborns go through about 12 diapers a day because they poop, literally, every time they eat. So um, make sure you do have one pack of diapers on hand at least and you might want to invest in a size one as well. If, however, you're like me and you're doing cloth diapers, make sure all your cloth diapers are prepped and ready. Um, and I still did have some newborn diapers on hand because, um, well, number one, my son was a preemie, so, well, kind of, he's preemie sized. He was like 37 weeks. Um, but I don't like meconium. Meconium's disgusting. It's like tar. And so it was just easier to have a couple disposable diapers. He went through the meconium over the first couple days in that, and then he was into his cloth. So, um, hi, hi boo boo. So anyway, that's a good idea to have. Um, and I'm gonna talk about the different types of cloth diapers, the different um, costs you can expect for cloth diapers. But if you are on a super tight budget, I would consider doing cloth because in the long run it is far cheaper than disposable diapering, even when you take into account the amount of water and electricity you might use washing them. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's spitting at his stuff. He's so gross today. Um, the next thing you're going to need for your baby is something for them to wear. Um, look at your climate to kind of decide what it is. My son was born in the fall, so I made sure that I had lots of nice, warm sleepers for him. But really, when you have a baby, if you know anyone who's ever had an infant, they generally tend to throw things at you. Like, please take these nine boxes of clothes. Um, you can use little cute outfits for newborns. I think it's nice to have one to just, you know, bring them home in. But really, most newborns live in sleepers, um, footed sleepers that are all one thing. I would recommend getting sleepers that have a zipper in the front because it just makes everything easier instead of trying to match up snaps at four in the morning when you're just wanting to crawl back into bed. Um, really? Are you okay? Yeah. Um, another thing you're going to want to uh, make sure you have on hand are some receiving blankets. You can use, you know, just the cheap flannelette ones. I really like the Aiden and Anais blankets. They are kind of pricey, but they are, um, I think, four for $50, which might sound ridiculous. Like, if that's out of your budget, it's out of your budget. Um, but maybe ask for it if someone's wondering what to get you. Um, that's spelled A D E N ampersand and then an or no it's not even ampersand it's like a plus sign and then anais is a-n-a-i-s i had a friend who thought it was anus but it's not it's anais so <laughs> anyway those i love them because they're big enough to like wrap your baby up or swaddle them or clean up puke or cover a whole car seat um and i just i like that they're kind of breathable they're 
um, muslin, so they're, um, they're, they're, they're quite porous. So the baby can even have, have it like on their face and there's still oxygen flowing through them. Um, you also will want like a nice snuggly blanket for your baby. This is just for you to cuddle with them with. Um, I just think that it's a good idea to have because I have kids, or at least my daughter, is very attached to her blankets. She's not a big stuffed animal kid, but she loves her blanket. And it's this blanket that she's had since she was about one. And it's just like this really nice soft pink minky blanket that she loves. So um, I think it's a good idea to have. It also helps when you are transitioning your baby maybe into their crib full time if that's something you're intending to do, just to have something nice and soft um, when they're older, you know, to snuggle with. Speaking of sleeping arrangements, <clears throat> this is going to differ based on who you are or what you are intending to do. We chose to co-sleep, and so he actually slept in our bed for the first, like, six months. Um, at six months, we started putting him to sleep in his crib. So um, in the beginning, depending on what you're going to do, you might need somewhere for your baby to sleep. Um, we did have a crib, but it was given to us by my husband's sister-in-law, or no, my husband's stepsister, my sister-in-law, and um, we did have a little bassinet that I got for $10 off a of swap and buy. Uh, it was just like a little Moses basket. It was fantastic for the first like six months, that Moses basket, it lasted us really well. Um, <laughs> If you are intending to put your baby into the crib sooner, or if you're intending to use a crib right from the get-go, you're going to want to have that on hand. Um, things you should be aware of is that it is, um, the drop-sided cribs are no longer recommended for infants, um, and you need to make sure the mattress pad is tight against the crib rails, um, and that there's a certain age of the crib, but the the bar spacing can't be too much. Um, and also bumper use is not recommended. All you need for your crib are some fitted sheets. That's it. Um, hi. And the very last thing that you will definitely need, at least if you live in Canada, is you will need a car seat. Um, I believe this is across Canada, but um, you're not allowed to leave the hospital with your baby unless you have a car seat. So um, do make sure you have one. As far as what kind of car seat to get, it's kind of a lie that you need to get a certain brand or that certain brands are better than others. All the brands are tested. All the brands need to conform to safety regulations. There might be some extra bells and whistles in some of them, um, but really they all need to like pass their safety tests um, in order to be sold. So, um, so do get a car seat buy your car seat new. Do not buy a used car seat because you, even if you know that person really well, there's always that chance that it has been in an accident, even if it's just the slightest bump. Thank you for spitting. Um, and so, yeah, do make sure you buy it new. Um, and it, other than that, it's kind of up to you as far as what brand you want to get or what fancy features you want. Um, the last Thing that I will say is there's a few things regarding clothing that I do want to address as far as people say you need to have them and they're really not something you need to have. The first thing, uh, people will tell you that you need to have socks. Socks are not necessary. And I don't like it when people say they are because they're really not. So, um, hi. Hi. Especially if in the beginning you're just using sleepers because they're footed, right? So the baby's feet are totally covered. Um, you can buy socks, but if you're going to buy them, don't buy those really crappy ones from Walmart that are all like fluffy and stuff. Um, I think it's a really good idea to buy bigger kid socks, like 12 months, 18 months, that look like socks. Like they're kind of thinner material, they have the defined heel and toe. Um, and then all you do is pull them up over their calf because then they don't fall off all the time uh, because they're kind of attached <laughs> up at the top. Are you pooping? Oh, you dropped your toy. Here you go. There you go. There's your little owie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Very nice of you. Um, and then 
yeah, so I, I like those. You can also go for higher end socks. The brand name socks, Mex socks fit really well. But some people just don't have it in their budget to spend 12 bucks on two pairs of socks. I know I don't, but my, my mom bought them for me because she went a little crazy when she had a grandson. So um, the other thing is a hat. Hat, it kind of depends on your climate. Now I'm in Canada, so yes, the hat was necessary. Several hats were necessary and necessary all through winter. Um, <coughs> so babies do lose most of their body heat through their head and they lose more heat proportionally through their head than adults. Um, <coughs> however, really, if you are just hanging around your house um, or it's a really nice sunny day that's not too windy, <coughs> your baby doesn't need a hat. Um, well, there was one more thing that I was going to say. Mm, it might be gone. Yeah, I think it's gone. So, anyway, oh, that's it, right. The last thing that people say you need and you don't, if you live in Canada like me, or the northern parts of the U.S. or Europe, <clears throat> you do not need and should not buy a car seat bunting bag like the one that your baby is actually zipped into if you are going to be driving anywhere with that car seat um, <clears throat> this is because those compress so when they when you're in an accident that chest thing the five-point harness the chest bit is meant to break um, and if they're in a um, a snowsuit or a bunting bag or anything like that it actually compresses and it will um, it totally negates the point of having straps because um, your baby flies back and it pushes that that padding down hi <laughs> and then it just makes more space in between their straps and it's very unsafe babies can go like shooting out of their car seat um, I do own a bunting bag but I have it because it's cold as hell here, and so, well, that's gonna be hot. It's cold as, it's cold. So, um, you know, when we were going for walks, I would put him in it, um, but certainly never in the car. They should just be in their regular clothes and then a blanket over top, or you can buy um, those elasticized uh, things that go over top of the car seat. Those really only work until your kid starts kicking them off. Um, and um, they also sell, but you probably find them mostly on Etsy or places like that, but they're like a car seat blanket. There's actually a tutorial somewhere on Pinterest. I saw this. So it's like, it's this very thin piece of fabric that isn't going to affect anything. It's actually installed, like the straps are installed over top of the fabric. And then there's like thicker fabric on the side, like wings. And so you put your baby in and buckle them, and then the bits of fabric wrap around your baby and keep them warm. Um, I think it's brilliant, right? Like, that's what a great idea. So um, get one of those maybe instead of a bunting bag. But don't, please, please do not put your baby into a car seat in a snowsuit or a bunting because it's very, very dangerous. Um, oh, the last thing that I was going to say about car, seat, car seats. I'm sorry, I worked all day. Um, trying to do a video, my brain is scattered. Car seats, um, there's two kinds of car seats you can get for newborns. There's the bucket seat and then there's the convertible car seat, the one that um, will change, it will grow with your baby or you can put your newborn in it and then it eventually becomes a toddler car seat. Um, it's really kind of up to you what you want to get. There are benefits, pros and cons for both. Pros for having the bucket seat is you can kind of carry it around with you. Hi. Cons for having the bucket seat is it really only lasts for about a year um, or until your baby hits, I think it's 22 pounds, and then you need to change them out and into a toddler car seat. Um, pros for the toddler car seat is that it can remain rear facing for a long period of time. So even when your kid is like three, if you still want to rear face them, which I know some people do, especially if they have smaller children, um, like just build wise, uh, if you do that, like no problem but cons you can't really carry it around with you and there's been some studies that um, say that that the convertible ones like when the baby's all you know head down and stuff it's not really good for their neck 
um, just because it doesn't provide quite as much support as, as a bucket. So anyway, consider it. I will be doing another video tomorrow about kind of the things that are really nice to have, but optional. So um, the, these will include things like if you, you wait till you bring your baby home and then like your baby kind of indicates that they need certain things and I will touch on those. The other thing is gonna be things that are like totally optional. Like these are not at all necessary. Every single baby can survive without them. So um, anyway, that's kind of it. And uh, are you trying to grab the puppy? The puppy's not coming near you. No, he's learned. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that was informative and helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any requests for videos, please put it in the bar below. Thumb up the video and subscribe if you want. Um, I'm trying to upload videos several a week, so we'll see. And I have like a whole list started of things. Things that I want to do. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.